Not too long ago, Marty O'Donnell, famous composer for the Halo series, was found in contempt of court and ultimately sued for several expenses amounting to nearly $100,000. This was due to his breaking of a court order from a previous lawsuit where he was ordered to hand in all material related to the soundtrack he helped compose for Destiny. Ultimately, the lawsuit occurred in response to him sharing music from the album, as well as unfinished stems. This was music that Bungie owns, and it indicates he did not follow the court order. In the wake of the event, the internet, or at least Reddit, seems to have turned against him. It seems they possess the information now to make the judgement that Marty isn't really such a good guy. He's wholesome zero. What I'm going to say probably isn't going to put me in good favour with the benevolent overlords of the gaming industry, but this is one of those times I feel somebody needs to speak out to kind of correct the record, a, a bit of a voice against the consensus. This is an attack on anyone, and this isn't an indictment to the talented people still working at Bungie. The public figure Marty O'Donnell has changed significantly to become a real prick. Meanwhile, the actual person, Marty O'Donnell, seems to have changed very little. There is a public-facing figure, a simulacrum, a fabricated spectre of Marty O'Donnell, upon which significant criticism and disdain has been heaped as of late. Now, what are the reasons for this change of heart? From once community hero to a pariah? Well, there's a couple. Obviously his lawsuit. He was sharing and monetizing Bungie-owned content on his YouTube channel, as well as his Bandcamp. This was content that he was not legally allowed to own, let alone share. This was a stipulation in the original 2015 lawsuit when he was first terminated from Bungie. He was ordered to return all material related to Music of the Spheres, which he didn't instead opting to release them publicly years later. He even publicly showed contempt for the legality of the situation. Yeah, I was going to ask uh, legal obligations and that sort of thing with those videos. You know, I really don't care about legal obligations. I mean, I've been through the mill on with lawyers and legal stuff. I, you know, yeah. I'm just, I don't care. Like, to me, it's sort of like, look, come after me. To some, this shows that he's difficult to work with. There was also a situation with a Reddit moderator. He posted a link to his Bandcamp on Reddit with a very vague title. The Bandcamp included several old Bungie-related soundtracks. It was removed due to being unrelated to the subreddit. Marty got frustrated and responded with lines like, Don't you know who I am? And Freak you. The Reddit mod argued that the rules apply to everybody equally and that this post was both vague and vaguely related to Destiny. Marty got more frustrated and said he's thinking of starting a war with the subreddit. It's important to note he said, I don't understand Reddit and I didn't understand the response and overreacted. I'm going to leave Reddit alone and then subsequently deleted his Reddit account on the same day. Also, apparently Marty is alt-right, not to mention the testimonies of how hard he is to deal with. This clip with Joe Staten, or these documents from the court proceedings, that Marty's behavior was disruptive and harmful to his fellow employees, that his presence was frustrating and he wasn't contributing. He's had a fall from grace, like Prometheus, he betrayed the gods and was cast down. But, do these commenters have all the context when they pass this judgement? Or is there another side to this story? Let's take a deeper look at why the public opinion has flipped. You know, I'll go headfirst into the most controversial and dumbest point. Is Marty spreading alt-right propaganda, as some have claimed? No, he's not. And I think it's quite dishonest to just make bold claims like that. He's done things like share Thomas Soul on his community tab, or say he didn't like that Gillette ad. That is nothing out of the pale. That's not alt-right. What precisely do you expect from a 65-year-old man? It's quite honestly a small collection of minuscule events. If these kinds of things are a cancelable event for you, then so be it. But be prepared to cancel a hell of a lot of people. Now, onto the real thing. What about the situation on Reddit? Invoking his status as a means to bypass the rules? Being rude to the moderators? He seems like an egotist. Well, if you're at all like me, 
When you heard that Marty O'Donnell got into an argument with a Reddit mod and said, don't you know who I am? Your first thought was, is that it? This is such a minuscule event to cast judgment on someone's character. Okay, sure, it's not a good thing, but this rates somewhere between parking infraction and jaywalking for me in terms of offences. I'm the citizen's infringement officer. I'm giving you a ticket for being an obnoxious tool. I have some disappointing news for you guys. I admit it, I've received a parking ticket before. I know, I'm deeply remorseful about it. From the bigger picture, this really is nothing. Some people made the absolutely horrendous comparison to this being like finding out that somebody is perverted or abusive. They often edited their moronic comments in recognition of the fact that this was such a terrible equivalence to make. But it is more about what he said rather than what he did. People feel that his words reflect the content of his character. Don't you know who I am? Does sound egotistical. But in this context, it kind of is important. In any game community, there is likely significant interest in the people behind the game. Marty was instrumental in producing Destiny's soundtrack. Perhaps it was irrelevant. You know, he was linking his Bandcamp, but the specific page was for Oni, not any Destiny related page. And as we know, Bungie would never cynically hawk goods based on nostalgia for previous Bungie games. The response to the post by fans on the Destiny subreddit was actually largely positive. It seemed at first as though they were actually quite interested. Some of them actually criticized the moderator for removing it, but ultimately something tells me this part about the rules applying to everyone equally isn't entirely true. Rules are bent all the time, in real life and especially so on Reddit. If it was somebody like Luke Smith or Jason Jones, this is definitely a hypothetical. Posting something vague? It may have been a different case. That's why I think this, in the oft-quoted post summarizing the topic, is an important justification. Marty does not care about Destiny or this community. He only uses Reddit for free advertisement. Always has, always will. He's done what in the past six years? And that is the crux of the situation. Marty has been cynically using the Destiny community, which he does not contribute to. Now, is there perhaps any reason why he may not be able to contribute? It's almost as if he was fired without cause and they tried to strip him of his equity in the company. Did you forget your precious company tried to rob him? Marty has contributed massively to Destiny. They are still using his themes, leitmotifs and melodies to this very day in Destiny. He completed all the music for the base of the Destiny franchise well before the game came out. And he did contribute to the Destiny community massively. He went in great detail, showing all the behind the scenes of the creation of Destiny's soundtrack. And these were behind the scenes files which he legally could not own. And they may well be destroyed now. Bungie clearly showed intent to destroy that content. We may not have ever heard these tracks. They were actually incredibly informative videos for any of you interested in music. You can probably find them extant somewhere online. But Marty made a public video where it looks like someone had a gun to his head telling people to delete the videos. He ultimately was legally forbidden from showing off or discussing his contributions to Destiny and the Destiny community. To say he never contributed to the Destiny community is ludicrous and insulting. He is perhaps the only person to ever break the law to do something for Destiny fans. Destiny fans spent years trying to piece together music of the spheres, all while Bungie was basically holding it hostage. Bungie only released it as a limited run vinyl years after Destiny's release. They didn't really care about the music. Now, what about all these reports that he's just a terrible person, that he's terrible to deal with? One of the examples is from the court documents from the original lawsuit. For example, Marty was incredibly begrudging with Activision. He became frustrated when they replaced his score in the E3 2013 trailer. He, quote, drove negative online discussion when he said that the music was made by the company that brought you Call of Duty. And really, when you made this... <laughs> You 
you get to override the decision made by some suits regarding trailer music. To be fair, if it wasn't already obvious then, it should be now. Activision sucks. But according to the court documents, this quote hurt the team. He was considered disruptive and harmful. We heard reports of vague complaints from the team, but little in the way of evidence. In April 2014, the audio team apparently complained that Marty wasn't contributing in the face of an immense workload still to be done. Here's the thing, how could he contribute? He was set up to fail. They already tried to fire him and try to forfeit his stock. How can you be passionate about a project when you know your work might even make the final cut? When the publisher has veto power and has more of a say than you do as the founder of the company, and the conditions at the time between Reach and Destiny were not conducive to good creative work. Just look at the state of Destiny 1's launch. Why did other veterans like Joe Staten, Marcus Leto, Jamie Griesema, Victor Leon, Paul Batone, and so on, also leave at the same time? It wasn't just regular industry churn, it was a mass exodus. Well, what about clips like this that show his behind the scenes relationships? What's it like working with Marty? That's a good question. Joe? Oh, well, I mean, it's the best. Working with Marty is an effort in patience and restraint. He's hilarious, he's funny, he's sharp. He gets to bitch like nobody's business about how much work he has and how little time there is. We work together really well, he's... The two of us together are the most unlikely couple for a variety of reasons. He, um, I hate him, actually. <laughs> Trust Redditors to not understand banter. Look, are you really going to judge somebody's character based on a single, out of context, 30 second clip? He has hours worth of interviews online. Sure, interviews don't represent an entire person, but it's better than a 30 second clip. Also, it's quite strange to voluntarily meet up with your workplace bully years down the track to catch up off your own volition. It seems like he gets on fine with people he worked with. And snooping their Twitter accounts, it seems they do certainly have different political beliefs to Marty. But that shouldn't fucking matter. The only actual solid examples I see of him being a bad person and bad to work with are literal corporate propaganda from the lawsuits produced by the company that was trying to rob him, making him look bad to save face. It was part of their strategy to undermine his public image. Besides that, all you have is these tiny out of context clips. Look, I'll tell you who was hard to work with. Activision and the Bungie leadership who complied with them. There are other minuscule examples, like his complaining about being credited for themes he composed in Halo Infinite. First of all, completely valid complaint. You ought to at least credit the original artist. Second of all, it wasn't even about the themes he composed. He was saying they should credit his partner, Mike Salvatore. So it wasn't even an ego thing for him. Now, what about this recent lawsuit? He was sued for distributing Bungie-owned music. What is strange to me is the Bungie-philic people celebrating this. Fuck around and find out! This is a company enforcing its copyright. Did you cheer when Disney sued a daycare center? Oh fuck man, those kids had it coming for stealing Mickey Mouse. Marty wrote the music of the spheres as work for hire, meaning he was plagiarizing his own work. He broke the law, that's indisputable. But this isn't a matter of what's legal, it's about what's right and what's wrong. Marty openly held the court order in contempt because it was a contemptible court order. Going back to the beginning, Bungie was in the wrong, separating him from the music in the first place. They terminated him without cause and withheld his unpaid leave. They made a terrible environment for him to work in, as well as try to strip him of his stock. This was to the tune of nearly $300,000. The arbitrator ruled that Bungie was unequivocally in the wrong. They needed a win, and something to give them leverage over O'Donnell. Something to save face, something to make it seem like both sides had done wrong. Bungie wanted Marty to return all his Music of the Spheres content. Not because they cared about Music of the Spheres, it's clear from the court papers that they had no interest in publishing it at the time. It's also important to note that much of the content removed 
was Halo content, which is ostensibly owned by Microsoft. Anyway, people say that Marty was wrong to monetize his self-plagiarized content, but here's the thing. It's not about the money. It's about sending a message. The money is entirely irrelevant here. Bungie did not care about the money. The court documents literally say Bungie management believe withholding Music of the Spheres would give them leverage over O'Donnell because they needed to control him to control the narrative. Because firing their star composer is kind of a PR nightmare. Because every time he went out to the public and explained some of the background, explained what actually happened, he made Bungie management and Activision look worse. That's what this most recent lawsuit was for, to shut him up. Bungie never planned to make any money off Music of the Spheres. They only released one limited run vinyl pressing after it leaked online, following an extensive campaign from Destiny fans to piece together the original music, and the $100,000 from this lawsuit is chump change to them. Bungie knew that Marty, being an artist, would want to share his art, discuss it, talk about it with the fans. So they held Music of the Spheres hostage to keep Marty quiet. This is how he, quote, hurt the team, by being vocal about Bungie's abject failings. The most scummy thing is, they planned to publish Music of the Spheres basically right after they fired Marty meaning they were effectively planning to just steal his work because this was a request they denied while he was still working at the company. Now, intellectual property law exists to empower artists by protecting investments in art and creative endeavors. It's meant to make it so firms that invest in creation don't lose out on a market edge by having their stuff ripped off almost immediately by firms that invest in other things. But this is one of the many cases where the opposite of the intention occurs, where the laws are used to alienate artists from their art. Back to the political topic one more time. This should be a uniting political issue. Karl Marx wrote about alienation, how capitalism inherently alienates producers and creators from the product of their labor. When they don't own the things they value that they produce with their labor, they lose agency and autonomy over their very essence. On the converse, Ayn Rand, speaking on the power of individualism, decries second-handers who shun integrity in favor of conformity and succeed by following industry orthodoxy, rather than speaking out and risking, quote, negative online discussion. I don't think she mentioned that in her writings, but anyway. They punish the artists and creators. Many writers in history have recognized this issue in modern society with how a wedge is driven between art and the artist. They disagree wildly on the solution. Bungie clearly has no respect for art. They can use art without crediting or even asking the artist. But hey, it's cool, aren't you glad the artist decided not to kick up a stink about it? When you unwittingly defend the corporation, repeat their propaganda, you don't help us mold the new reality closer to the heart. All this philosophy bullshit aside, it seems strange to me that people have been heaping such praise on Michael Salvatore lately. Have people somehow gained some newfound appreciation for his work all of a sudden? No, it's that they're trying to remove Marty from history to kind of minimize his impact on a thing they love. For all we know, Mike may have felt the exact same way as Marty, but the difference is he isn't vocal. He very rarely makes public appearances, besides the nostalgia critic for some reason. So he basically got to keep his job. An important consideration is if Marty had simply shut up and allowed the corporate interference, he would likely still be working at Bungie. Now, that's not to criticize Michael Salvatore. It may well have been the wise thing to do. He has contributed incredible music to the game, but his best music was with Marty and the same is true vice versa. The real issue is that Marty drove negative online discussion. Bungie presented no evidence that he harmed the audio team, game sales, or the Activision relationship. The issue is that he spoke out. In the industry, you have to play ball. When Marty recounted the tale of the goose that laid the golden egg, one of the Activision executives said, ah, but there's nothing like a good foie gras. You're meant to hear that and not say anything. 
You're meant to hear that and not say, this dude is pure evil. And who says there's no reward in conformity? I, I hate to be the kind of complete nerd to quote Rush, but I am the shredded nerd after all. One likes to believe in the freedom of music, but glittering prizes and endless compromises shatter the illusion of integrity. Although written about the music industry, and fairly corny for me to quote it if I'm being honest, I still feel the lyrics are incredibly apt here. When you don't compromise, you get punished. Bungie has capitalized on every opportunity they can to get the heat off themselves for their various failings. And this lawsuit of theirs is just another example. Look, when I go out on a limb here, I'm making a judgment based on the evidence available. Marty may well have called his studio the seal clubbing shed, where he'd take in baby seals every Thursday and just club him. Look, I don't know if he truly is a bad person. He may well be. All I can say is we simply don't possess the information right now to assemble and demonize this public persona of a narcissistic, self-interested bully. Now, the reason I feel it's important to come out here and defend Mamadi's honor online is that he's being cancelled. Literally. There's another reason people don't like him anymore. If you didn't know, he's working on Six Days in Fallujah, that highly controversial, hopefully, upcoming game. One could argue he had it coming, going straight from a tumultuous past at Bungie to the most controversial game of the decade. But I think it's important that this game gets made. It was originally cancelled back in the day for being disrespectful to the troops, trivializing their struggle. Now it's being cancelled for glorifying the troops and whitewashing history. It's almost as if these culture warriors of completely opposing camps are the same self-important, moralizing arbiters of truth who are allergic to nuance and context and would rather a podium to shout out their indignance at anything they might find objectionable. There are common phrases from all these garbage journalists. The game is jingoistic propaganda. From the description, it's based closely on interviews with both US soldiers and Iraqi civilians, both of whom you'll be playing as, particularly focusing on how harrowing the battle was for its participants. It stresses how lethal the battle was in the trailer. I must have missed the part of it that said war is good or join the marines. Can someone please point it out to me? Because I'm just not seeing it. People say you can't be apolitical. Okay, people reading these press releases, I swear, have the most deliberately obtuse readings of them imaginable. It's very clear what he means by apolitical. They're going for a straight retelling of the stories, rather than injecting their own agenda. Moreover, it's very clear that they said this because it's already enough of a challenge to get this game made in the first place. They're trying to do what they think will minimize the inevitable controversy and, you know, get this thing out the door. Apparently, they're trying to whitewash history. They made a commitment not to depict anybody who actually died at the battle dying in the game. That's completely understandable. They said they would show descriptions of the use of white phosphorus. They're not pretending it didn't happen. The thing is though, it's not a gameplay element. You, the player, are not the one using it. And can you possibly conceive of any other reason besides whitewashing that they wouldn't want the player using white phosphorus in game? Would that be less or significantly more controversial? But Spec Ops let us use white phosphorus and it showed the effects. It really showed us the horror. Yes, and Spec Ops was fiction, based in a fictional battle. Did that game really push the boundaries of stories and games? When it's really just used more than anything to limit what can and can't be told in gaming by hack journalists and devs. That game looked like a generic military shooter before it released, so no one questioned it. And chances are, if people knew about the subject matter before release, before people actually had the context of playing the damn game, I think it would have been similarly controversial. How many World War II games show the firebombing of Dresden or the vaporizing of Hiroshima? Look, this game isn't propaganda. And if it is, it's absolutely shit at it. Propaganda is the media made for millions of people 
with massive marketing. It's meant to get inside your head without you knowing. It's made to subtly sway public opinion by including certain messaging which aligns with the viewpoint of those funding it and creating it. Trust me, anybody sitting down to play this niche title will be well aware of context well in advance. It's unlikely to affect the broader market. It's made for a niche audience to begin with. Look, it may end up being propaganda. It may just end up being bad. But we do not possess the information at this point to pass this judgment. Look, I'm sorry, but you do not have hours worth of original commentary on this topic. What we witnessed with this whole saga is the creation of folklore, an image of a person and an image of a company increasingly divorced from any semblance to reality. There is a tendency in human beings to seek moral indignation. Some say they are sad that they can no longer respect O'Donnell. You're not sad. You relish the opportunity for moral indignation. Man is bound to do wrong, but with a desire to do what's right. And sometimes this desire only leads us to make things worse. This is a game that needs to be made. Is it propaganda? Well, we'll just have to wait and see before we pass that kind of judgment. Now, wait till you see what's in store next on the channel. You can only find out by hitting that subscribe button. I thank you all so much for watching through this long video, possibly controversial video. Um, leave your thoughts below. Thank you all and goodbye.